And at this stage, in the early 80s, it was easy to sympathise with Nirenberg's view. Global warming was still just a prediction and the science was in its infancy. So no one could be sure how big a problem it was going to be. And all around there was evidence from history that a changing climate was really nothing to be frightened of anyway. After all, it's something humans have always had to cope with. You only have to drive out to the edge of the Californian desert to find clear evidence that climate varies naturally. I'm standing on the edge of an ancient waterfall. It might be dry, barren rock now, but thousands of years ago, a roaring torrent of water cascaded its way through here, carving out this massive ravine. It's difficult to imagine what it must have been like when the water was in full flow, but I certainly couldn't have stood here. The normally jagged rock has been smoothed to a polish, and those potholes down here have been churned out by the turbulent water. It's created all these grooves and flutes on the rock sides. This is a fossilised river. But it's not just a geological relic. There's plenty of evidence here to back up Nirenberg's case. I bring my students here, not just to show them the river sculpted rocks, but for something else equally intriguing. The clues are all around, like these small flakes of dark volcanic glass called obsidian that Native Americans used to fashion arrowheads and spear points. And art like this over here, carved into the rock, it looks like a, an elk, a deer of some kind. It's all evidence that a large community lived and worked around the river here. Then the climate must have changed, the river stopped, and the people moved on. It's this process of natural climate change which lay at the heart of Bill Nirenberg's case. Humans have lived with climate change for thousands of years. All that's changed is how we cope. The key is adaptation. In the past, when the rains went, so did the people. Today, we can do much better than that. The Hoover Dam was built in the 1930s to tame the mighty Colorado River. If you ever wanted a symbol of what human ingenuity and sheer bloody mindedness can achieve, then this is it. Which is a bit unnerving to think that behind this concrete wall, there's a hundred miles of lake. Lake Mead has helped the Western United States conquer the cycle of drought and flood that used to afflict this desert region. It's a powerful symbol of our ability to ride out climate change. Especially when you realize that today, the lake is in the eighth year of a major drought. As you'd expect, the lake level has dropped. You can see a band of light-colored rock that's been exposed as the water has fallen. You know, it's only when you get into these narrow canyons that you get a sense of just how far the water's fallen. This light-colored rock here is what was once covered by the water that stretches up for about a hundred feet. It's like a giant bathtub ring. For Nirenberg, this was living proof that human ingenuity could overcome the gradual creep of climate change. Modern society, far from being ever more vulnerable to climate change, was actually more robust than it had ever been. So there was no need to fear climate change. It was an optimistic message that resonated with the political times. Nirenberg went on to set up one of the leading think tanks that would fight the whole idea of global warming and help create what became known as the Skeptic Movement. The global warming skeptics 
argue that the Earth's climate system was simply too vast for humans to change. They claimed that there was still very little evidence humans were causing the climate to warm up. And they suggested that any warming that did happen was likely to be slow and therefore easy to cope with. These ideas have remained central to the global warming debate ever since. But as the 1980s advanced, all three arguments came under sustained scientific attack. What shook the skeptics' argument was some more of those ugly facts. And by the mid-1980s, ugly facts were piling up at an alarming rate. Ugly fact number one would challenge the reassuring notion that climate change would be slow and therefore easy to cope with. It had its origins in one of the coldest and remotest places on Earth, Greenland. More than 80% of Greenland's surface is covered in ice. It's the largest body of ice on Earth, outside Antarctica. Today, despite its remoteness, scientists come here from all around the world to study the effects of climate change on the ice. But 50 years ago, at the height of the Cold War, virtually no one did scientific research on Greenland. Except the American military. The ice sheet under my feet is up to two miles deep. And 50 years ago, the Americans decided that the perfect place to build a military base was down there, inside the ice. Officially, they called it Camp Century because it was 100 miles from the coast, but the men who built it gave it a different name. The City Under the Ice. More than 200 people lived here. It was a massive project. Huge convoys used to grind their way from the coast up onto the ice, laden with supplies for Camp Century. They used to call them heavy swings. When it was finished, Camp Century had a library, a hospital, and even a gym. And what powered it all? What else but a nuclear power station? I know it's hard to believe, but they buried a nuclear reactor inside the ice. Camp Century was built to do research into fighting in cold weather environments. But that's not what made it famous. Today there's nothing left of the city under the ice. They took out the nuclear reactor and abandoned the camp somewhere up there. But what happened at Camp Century would eventually, almost by accident, lead to a scientific revolution. It was a revolution that would challenge a scientific article of faith. The idea that climate could only change exceptionally slowly. Because Camp Century saw the beginning of an entirely new branch of science, using samples of ancient ice to reconstruct the climate of the past.